Hey everybody, welcome back to part two. Um, in this part we're going to go over some of the uh, equipment that I use and the next two steps of my sorting process. So we left off last time with washed pellets. Here's my washed pellets. Again, I put a lid on them and I mark them with some kind of tape or whatever that's going to tell me exactly where I left off with these. It also stops me from mixing those with anything else. So I've got my 25s here. I've also got 22s in the same condition, washed, ready for sort. And now this one here is the third one. What I'm going to do with this one is we're going to have some defects coming up through this round. Um, and I'm just going to throw them in here because these are the defects that are going to maybe cause spiraling or cause a uh, point of impact change. These are the ones that are going to make the biggest difference in that. So these are, I'm going to call them trash, um, but chronograph, maybe, you know, just shooting for fun, plinking, stuff like that. That's, that's what we're going to end up with with that. Uh, something else I have in front of me here is I got this here box at Home Depot and inside it's got a bunch of little compartments. You can take the dividers out to change the size uh, and you can see already that I've got a bunch of stuff labeled. So what I'm going to do is I'll be inspecting next. All those defects are going to go in here. I know I have defect way back here but all my next defects are going to go in here and then I move on to the weighing process. These two work hand in hand if you have the right equipment. If you don't, you'll have to go maybe do something else. But the way I'm doing it, they work hand in hand and they, um, they kind of, they just make it a little more efficient. Um, I got a few comments on the three minutes per pellet. <laughs> uh, don't get hung up on three minutes per pellet, guys. Three minutes is the ones that make it all the way to the end. Um, you know, it's like I've got the washing process, that takes a little bit of time. Then I've got the inspecting process, that takes some time, but that eliminates a whole bunch. Then I've got the weighing process, and that eliminates a whole bunch. Um, and then the head sizing, which is very time consuming, but even that's going to eliminate even more. But, you know, as you get closer to the end, yes, you're going to spend more time per pellet. Also, when I came up with three minutes, it was uh, early on when I was... Um, doing all my sorting early on before I kind of consolidated some stuff like this, these next steps. So don't get too hung up. Um, anyway, this case is nice because, like I said, all of these little compartments, it's not nice because it's hard to get the pellets out. So I found this little cup in a drink mix thing. Uh, I still have to mark it, no food, but I found this to be kind of handy because you can come in and you can scoop against the side of one of these compartments and grab a bunch of pellets and then lift them up and you've got a bunch. So I found that handy for that. Also, I've got these tweezers. These tweezers have this little bent edge on them. Uh, you'll see how these come in handy later on for picking a pellet up that's that's sitting straight up. It's, it's just real, a real nice grab. Um, oh, I also lined them. I've got some uh, sticky back felt and I line them with sticky back felt on on there so I don't that's so that I don't create any indents when I'm picking them up remember lead is very soft so yeah I stand the chance to uh, to leave a scratch or a mark another reason why I like this case and there's plenty of other ways to do this but another way is I'm not afraid to do that because I've tested this and I know that the pellets are not going to go from compartment to compartment. I tested it to make sure of that. On the other side is the same thing, the same setup. So the previous side was my 25.4 grains. These are my JSB MK2 heavies. So that's another nice thing about it is I can have all my 25 caliber that I'm shooting. Well, two anyway, two, two uh, main pellets. I can have them in one case. So I'm going to go out to shoot 25, I'm going to go compete or whatever. I can just grab this whole case with me. One thing I have learned to do though is if I'm not putting stuff in the case, I always close it and lock it. Uh, 
it would be a nightmare to have this get mixed up after all the time that's been put into it. What else? Speedy Pellet Inspector. I love the Speedy Pellet Inspector. This thing is awesome. I mean, yeah, it's just a piece of plastic with a bunch of holes in it. But man, does it make the process so much easier. Um, I have two of them, one in 25 and one in 22. And it's really nice to have two. And the reason it's nice is because you get an extra one of these little plastic pieces. Yeah, you can make your own for sure. But you'll see how that comes in handy later on. Um, I've also got my weight scale. I'll put a picture of this so you can see what it is. It's uh, what is it? Gemini 20. This is good down to the thousandth of a grain. Yeah, thousandth of a grain. Here it is. Um, I like it. It's not an um, overly expensive scale. There are definitely better, more accurate scales out there. I'm not saying this is the best. But when I went online and I went to the guys on the forum and I said, hey, what are you guys using? Um, there was a couple of them that, that mentioned this very one. So these are guys that are sorting. They all came up with the same solution. I'll go. I'll, I'll bite. <laughs> but yes, there, you can spend a lot of money on a very accurate scale if you want. A headlamp, very important piece of this for the inspection process. Um, Nice fresh batteries in it and a nice, good, comfortable headlamp because you'll be wearing it for a little while. So, my whole process is the whole concept behind it is eliminating the most pellets as quickly as possible so that I'm not spend I'm not wasting time on a pellet that's damaged. You know, I'm not going to weigh it and then head size it and then inspect it to see if it's damaged. I want to inspect first so I can just dump a whole bunch of pellets out uh, and then I want to weigh that's going to dump a whole bunch of pellets into different categories. It's also going to allow me to uh, take a little bit of a closer look at each pellet as it passes by over the scale. Uh, so that generally produces a few more defects that I didn't pick up on and a lot of those pellets end up going to the overweight or underweight pile so I'm just I'm eliminating a lot uh, head sizing like I said it takes a long time well not a long time but it takes the most amount of time um, out of the processes I'm doing so far so I really want to you know, I really don't want to waste any time doing that to a pellet that's just gonna end up in the garbage anyway all right got my pellets out Got my little defect in ready to go. The weight scale, I don't necessarily need that ready to rock just yet, but I do need my pellet, speedy pellet inspector. And oh, my headlamp is on my head. And I will zoom you guys in so you can see exactly how I'm doing this. All right, grab a handful. Like I said, anything in here is always very gentle. Try not to beat up the pellets. Nice thing about a nice big Tupperware container like this is you can bang against the sides, which sometimes gets the pellets in place. And uh, if they fall out from shaking too hard or whatever, they'll just fall right back in the bin. Um, I will spend a little bit of time to make sure every hole is filled. Uh, it just, you know, it just makes it that much quicker to have you know, no wasted time, no wasted holes. All right, once you get them to this point, now it's time for the headlamp. Now I'm going to inspect the skirts. I'm going to look for any kind of any massive deformities, I guess you might say, like chunks missing out, a really badly bent skirt, um, anything like that. I've, I've had tins of pellets where like half of the pellets are just bent really bad. And, you know, actually I shot them over the chronograph. I didn't even bother, bother with them. But sometimes you get that tin that's just really got a bunch of bad ones. Put your plate on the bottom and flip. Now this part is really sh 
shooter's preference, how detailed you want to get. Um, you'll have pellets that... You'll have pellets with dents, and that could be from smashing while they were still warm in the process, or what, you know, they have flat spots in them. And then you also notice some that have what looks like smiley faces. That's from it sitting in a skirt like this and just getting, you know, pressed against that other pellet for so long. That smiley face could catch the air as the pellet's going through the air. It could catch that and, and cause it to deviate off a normal flight path. Um, along with that, I mean, it's that's really the main two. It, it's, it's smiley faces and flat spots. And like this one right here, I can see it has a little dent. You probably guys probably can't see it, but um, got a little dent. It looks that's actually a smiley. It's just a just a bit of a smiley face. So that's really what I'm looking for. Um, another thing is when I'm doing this, how do I know which pellet? Because it's easy to lose place. Well, I I like to count. I go like, see this one here, I can see it's got a big smiley face on it. So I'll say three and three. So that means row three, third one in. And then I got three and five. Doesn't matter what side, but three and five is bad as well. Um, I flip over and I know three and three. And then three and five. Okay, grab my plate again. And we flip back over and we go to the next row or two. Generally, I do uh, two rows at a time, and I'll go through this whole thing. And most of the time, I'm taking out somewhere in the neighborhood of around 20 pellets, or 20%, uh, sorry. So in this case, it would be about 18 pellets that I'm gonna end up taking out. Now, that's obviously, it varies. Um, so let me get rolling on that, and I won't bore you guys talking through it. Oh, um, when you do look at them, don't just stare at them. Move them around because sometimes they're dented on the side here and you won't see it unless you really move it around. And so, oh, there's a little dent and you can take that one out. All right, guys, so I got uh, 14 out of that bunch, not bad. I'm sure there'll be a few more defects as I go. This is where this other plate comes in handy. The next step is gonna be weighing the pellets. And it would be kind of nice, instead of throwing them into a bin and then picking them out of the bin again, or throwing them on the table and they're kind of all over the place, they're already set on a plate here. So use this, use this other plate that you may or may not have, or you make or whatever. And I just, I mean, you could, you could see when I, well, before I did that, um, they all kind of drop, but they don't drop out. So use this other plate and I just gently hold them up, give it a little push and they all come out. Now they're all sitting straight up in the air. This allows me to go back into my pile here, and I'll grab another handful and I'll sort through them, and I'll leave this, you know, uh, I'll take out the defects and then I'll set it aside so when I empty this plate, I can do the same thing to this next one. And there, I, you know, I can just kind of move on down the line. So, now I've got a bunch of pellets that are sitting straight up in the air, and this is where this angle comes in handy because now I can just come in and grab a pellet nice and come in and grab a pellet nice and it'll sit on the scale nice. So let my scale warm up and we start the weighing process. This is also where I'm going to open my case or tins if I'm going to sort into tins or whatever. Um, this is where I'm going to do that. Now the question comes up, how detailed am I going to get? So what you guys can see here is 25.48.
and and the question is how detailed do I get and and for me I've kind of broken this down into a simple method in order to move the process along and that is anything between 25.30 and 39 I'm going to put into one pile um, Anything between 25.40 and 49, I'm going to put that into the next pile. And then anything in 25.50 to 59, I'm going to put that in the last pile. Anything lighter than 30 goes into a lighter category. Anything heavier goes into the heavier category. And that's what you'll see in my case here is anything 25.4 right here. So what that does is I don't have to really pay too much attention to the very last number, which, you know, breathing can change that last number. So I don't have to really focus on that. All I have to do is wait for it to start to settle and settle out. And once the weight starts settling out, where is it? Three, four, or five. And that'll tell me which one to put it in. And then, like I said, I've got a whole bin here of lights and a whole bin here of heavies. The neat thing about these two bins is these are pellets that aren't defective, except in weight only. So the numbers that make it all the way to the end here are very small. Out of the, out of the 90 pellets I have sitting on this plate, only about 10%, give or take, are going to make it all the way to the end, this last category with head size. I might get about oh, 13 to 15 that are the right weight, and then a couple of more will be just too far out for head size. So the numbers are really bad, but keep in mind that this is perfection. This is not a good pellet or a very good pellet. This is all the way to the nth degree. So these lights and these heavies, they're great for shooting. They are awesome. They are going to be a great pellet for you uh, for practicing and getting things down. The defects, that's the stuff you look for chronograph, plinking, playing around, stuff like that. Uh, close range hunting even. But lights and heavies, you know, rock those suckers uh, because they're good. Also, if you run into a whole bunch that are like overweight or underweight or something um, and they just aren't really lining up just you know take it off make sure it zeroes out and then put it back on again and make sure that it weighs the same amount uh, and every once in a while you know if your scale doesn't zero out obviously turn it off turn it back on again you got the little calibration weight here so you can do that um, but just, you know, just watch your, watch your scale. If you're really uncomfortable with the results you're getting, you know, sometimes it's worth it to take the pellet off, put it aside, weigh a couple more, and then bring, come back to it. Because these do wave around for, a, you know, a while. Well guys, 19 pellets out of the 90 I started with, with the inspector. Only 19 are the, are the weight that I'm looking for. Now your gun might want the 25.3s or the 25.5s or whatever you're doing. It might like a different weight. Um, the nice thing is, like I said earlier, the 25.3s, they're all good. They're just a touch lighter. 25.5s, all good they're just a touch heavier so you know these are all good pellets but the ones I'm looking for are 25.4 and the reason I picked 25.4 
is because it says here they're supposed to be 25.39. So if the factory says they wanted them at 25.39, 25.4 is close enough for me. Um, so, you know, that's just the reason I picked that. I haven't really done much testing, but um, as far as shooting goes, I've been spending a lot of time sorting. So now I'm transitioning into the shooting part. But um, So now I take these 19 pellets, so that's, uh, what, 20%. I take these 19 pellets and I take them to the next step, which is going to be part three of my series here. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Just like the last one, um, if you guys have a way that you do this that maybe is more efficient or that you like, uh, or even a scale that you would recommend, by all means, put it in the comments. Um, head, on, head on over to Airgun Nation. You can touch base with me there if you have questions or comments as well, and as always, happy shooting.